So here we are. Here, notice my slideshow is not as detailed as Lindsay, but she's half my age, so there we are. <laughs> if we um, go to this PSEO, what it means is post-secondary enrollment option. What we are looking, what it is, is that it's a program that allows public and non-public students in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade to take college classes while still in high school. Um, why it was created? It was started to give um, students more access to the possibility of college. It was to help low-income students, uh, especially those students who may not have a guidance counselor or college prep, prep program in their high school, which we do. Um, students must apply to each PSEO program approved college independently, and each has a various application requirement. For example, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities has a different PSEO application than St. Paul College, also has different restrictions, different GPA requirements, all those things are different. So no two um, PSEO pro programs are exactly alike. So that's important to note. How do you find that information? Google is your best friend. You would Google the college that you were interested in and put the words PSEO in front of it and look at the page that is telling you what you need to know. Broken down, PSEO for 10th graders are to take career and technical education legislation by the uh, Minnesota Department, uh, allows public and non-public 10th graders to enroll in one career and technical CTE course through PC PSEO. If the student earns a C or higher in this course, they are eligible to take additional courses while in 10th grade. If they get less than the, than the C, they are not allowed to do PSEO again the next quarter. Please note that the choice for PSEO students is very limited with a focus on this technical education. So again, it's only one class. They're looking at very much that IT, uh, the trades, those types, and uh, you are still required to keep up on your course load at Great River and to be on track for graduation. PSEO for 11th and 12th graders, it's a wide variety of classes, but students and families should be aware of what MDE and GRS requires so that they can graduate on time. There have been students who then take some PSEO classes thinking it will save them money or get them quicker to graduation, and they end up having to do summer courses or make up what they've missed for the MDE GRS requirement. So um, do that, look at that very closely. Who is PSEO good for? It's for those students who are in credit, who are really independent. They're great at managing their time. Um, they're uh, seniors, they're, they must be at the top half of their class and juniors in the top third. Seniors must have above a 50% percentile on the, uh, on the ACT and juniors in the top 70 on the ACT or SAT. As some of you may know, we aren't taking the ACT at Great River because colleges aren't requiring it anymore. MCAs may be substituted for ACT scores and that is something that we are doing. Interest beyond IB. If you have a talent or interest or classes that aren't offered at GRS, it can be a way to supplement that. Um, also to explore uh, different things like sign language, computer science, those things. Again, the student who does incredibly well, are they able to navigate higher education, learning environments, teaching styles, and the balance of what connection to that community? For example, when I go back into those mastery of skills, they are able to get themselves to and from places, but also they're at a college level already, of putting their time together, knowing when work is due. They're, they're a master at that. They're doing that at a higher rate than most students in their grade. And I have to say out loud, the students who don't do well 
are people who struggle with that, who may need some student support. And I think that's something that a high school or Great River tends to do fairly well at. Um, if you have a 504 and IEP, that still transfers into a college, but it looks very different in college than it does in high school. So be aware of the level of support is very different. And that varies again from college to college. Um, myths about PSAO. It's easier to get college admissions at, if you do PSEO. That is a huge myth. While students can take a wide variety of classes at bigger universities, college admissions officers consider IB classes the most rigorous academic path. And IB students um, do have advantages in a highly competitive application pool. And I, I wanna say that because I, I study this stuff all the time and I also serve on the college um, board for both Stanford and Bard um, College. And one of the things that we're constantly looking at is application pools and who you're going to admit in a certain class and who you're gonna give the most money to. And I'm behind the curtain a lot on that. And I think that helps me be a good uh, college access person but I'm also super passionate about all that nerdy stuff. So if I was breaking it down for you, I want to explain the most rigorous path they see is a full IB diploma, followed by an AP scholar, which we do not offer at GRS, um, and then IB classes, which we do offer at GRS, and then, um, and then PSEO. So it's fourth on that. And that means a lot when you're looking at candidates with two um, identical GPAs and identical really great letters, same activities, who I'm choosing then out of those is the, is the IB person, honestly. And, I, and I, I say that every year and every year some people listen to me and some people don't. Um, and I had students who have gotten perfect like it's almost impossible to get a perfect ACT score. They did most of their schooling in that PSEO and got waitlisted at all the colleges they applied to. Now, did they apply to selective colleges? That's correct, they did. But again, that's where that weighting comes in and what they're looking at as far as rigor and rewarding some of those scholarships. And that parent was very shocked. And so I don't want you all to be shocked. So I'm not saying that saying that I have preference over one or the other. I have preference of you having the most information to make the best decision for you and your child. And I'm happy if you have a question, um, you can always write to me or uh, stop in my office, but I, I really want to, you to know what gives you advantages and what doesn't. Um, a lot of people have this misconception that PSEO um, will save them money in college. It will if you're going to that college for your four-year degree. So if you're going to the University of Minnesota and you start doing PSEO there, yes, you can save a year um, a year off uh, tuition. I would, again would offer that for a full IB diploma at colleges throughout the country, you can send you can save a year off tuition. But if you're going to that PSA, well, they don't let you double dip. And I love to double dip. I love to get as much money in scholarships as possible. So what that means about double dipping is if you take PSEO classes at the Twin Cities or St. Paul College, and we use that for credit at Great River for graduation, you cannot use it for credit then at that college. Again, I don't agree with that, but that's the way that it, it happens. So I just want you to be aware of those details. Students should consider all the variables when applying to PSEO. I want you to think about student support. I want you to think about community. I want you to think about connections for those letters of rec for when you go into college, because if you're not at school for two years doing PSEO, who's going to write those letters of rec for you? Will it be a college professor? Will you be able to form those types of relationships? So those are just things to think about and to talk about as a family.
how to enroll in PSEO. Again, that research, different colleges, universities that offer that and their application process. Each higher education institution will have different requirements listed on their website. Make Check those requirements um, listed on the webpage and include those GPS MCA testing scores if it is required by that institution. Meet with your counselor, which would be me, if you are interested in doing that. And I will also give you a PSEO form that I will sign. And those are right outside my office. So they're super accessible for people. Even if I'm not there, you can grab a PSEO form at any time. All students must uh, complete that form, that notice of student res uh, registration. So I have those all printed out and ready to go for you. Again, the requirements vary from one college and university to another. There is unfortunately no single website that lists all the admissions. When you go to apply to college, there are, you can do the Common App and it's so much easier, honestly, than applying to all these different ones. They have different requirements. Um, so you need to go to the website and look, what, look at what you're considering. When I say different requirements, you will see a difference of they may require a GPA at the University of Twin Cities of a 3.0, but St. Paul College, it may be a 2.5. And that's what I mean by different requirements. The University of Minnesota campuses and state college and others, and each private college has its own. So McAllister, um, St. Thomas, they all have PSEO programs, but they all have different requirements for that. We recommend that you check with the higher education institution you're considering. Please do not assume that all college and universities have the same class rank, grade point average, or test scores requirement because they don't. Also, don't assume that just because you're taking PSEO classes that it looks as fancy at one institution versus another um, because McAllister, it's called the weight of a diploma. So McAllister has different curriculum when you're applying to college admissions than St. Paul College does. So those all have different weights as far as value in a college admissions person's eyes. Are funds for transportation available to help students attend courses on college campuses? You bet, we're legally required to do that. If a student is from a low income family, transportation can be provided I would say we do that mostly with bus passes. Computers, we're also legally obligated to give you a computer to be provided for all students who do online courses. So that's another thing required by the state of Minnesota. Must school districts provide information and families and students about PSEO? Again, of by you know March 15th, and we're at the 14th, so we're doing pretty well this year. Each district must provide up-to-date information on the district's website, materials about the program, and they must be disabled to be accessed by parents and students. That is a legal requirement by MDE, the Department of Education. Um, can students take online classes through PSEO? Yes, many two and four years colleges have that option. Again, you need to research that. There's a wide variety of online courses offered in the Minnesota higher education. Um, it's also possible for PSEO students in our state to complete a transfer curriculum, and all those courses could result in an award addition to their high school diploma. What that means in English <laughs> is that you could get a, a, um, a certification in like, as an electrician or a welder on top of your high school diploma if you went the trade route. Um, must schools, must school districts provide online students with computers? We already said that. We must allow PSEO students reasonable access to high school building, computers, and other technology during regular school hours to participate in PSEO courses, whether online or on campus. Also, that means you have access to me. I don't stop being your counselor because you take PSEO classes. And so you have access to all a college workshops, all that's required. It isn't, I mean, I am a nice person, but it isn't just because I'm a nice person. We are legally required 
to give you the same access as a PSEO student as we do to a full-time GSRS student in the building. That was a lot of initials. Great River is here. We're here to answer questions, to provide transcripts. I can always do that. Um, to connect you with test scores if you need that and sign all the PSEO paperwork and to support you and your family to make the best individual decision. I do not do applications with students because that would be impossible if you're looking at the 72 um, students I have in each class and I am one human being. But I do give you support in individual questions for families, but also student questions and walk you through it. Um, who do you contact? Matt is the Dean of Students. He also, he's receiving all those grades um, and PSEO information and myself, and I'm the Director of College Access. I would also say for those people who are um, doing PSEO, follow up with your transcript, make sure the grades that you get get entered in your GRS transcript. And again, I go back to that legalese, which I kind of like is you can ask for your transcript at any time and we are legally required to give that to you. So you do a semester of PSEO, look at how that affects your GPA, look at what that looks like on your transcript and make sure all the classes that you took gets transferred. That doesn't automatically happen or is as easy as it does when you're taking classes directly at Great River, because it just flows like one river really and goes into that big pool. But PSEO is a sublet of that. And so it is your job and your family's job to make sure that gets entered. And so that's an extra responsibility that you should be aware of. Um, Linz, can we go to any questions people might have? Yes, we have one question, and I think uh, it was mentioned a few times in terms of what I heard, but the benefits of PSEO, I heard you talk about um, independence, I heard you talk about getting a certificate in the trades, and I heard you talk about um, getting credit if you end up going to that university. So like example, the University of Minnesota, if you did PSEO at the University of Minnesota and then went to the University of Minnesota, that would be a benefit. Are there any other benefits you want to emphasize in terms of PSEO? Uh, well, I think overall, like for benefits that also you should know that there are some other programs that might do it a little bit better. And, and I'm not, again, I'm not addition PSEO, but the Power of You program is two years of community college or trade school absolutely free, books included, for anyone whose household income is under 80,000. And all you, you doesn't matter if your GPA, doesn't matter about your test scores, all you have to do is graduate from Great River. And that program is there. As again, the benefits for PSEO, it depends on the individual. I would say, I would say honestly, it's not made for a majority of people, but it is made for that person who just is ready to be in college, is functioning really exceptionally well in high school, doesn't need tons of support, and kind of is on their own individualized path. Okay. Um, these three questions are related in terms of what supports that uh, we offer at Great River. There's a question of whether we offer PSAT. Yeah. Uh, there's a question about if we have a career interest test. Yeah. And there's a question about who supports the application pro uh, process for PSEO, if anyone. Yeah. So could you speak to what resources we provide in those dimensions? Yeah, can can you give me the first question first? That was a lot. Yes. <laughs> um, the first one is, do we have the option uh, for GRS students to take a PSAT with yeah. So the truth is, we have not had the PSAT for three years. Um, one of the, there's many reasons why we haven't done that, um, but it has not been held at Great River for three years. However, we do give waivers so that students can take that at other high schools. Um, I think one or two students every year choose to do that, um, but it is not being used in the college application process. 
neither are standardized testing and there's a whole like there's forums about equity and a whole discussion happening around that so that's a, a big a big discussion but for now we have not nor are we currently planning to offer the BSAT that can change if the college um, landscape changes we will change with it to give us students the most access and scholarship money second question please uh, career interest test. Which so is we the, don't, so we, we operate on a very holistic, um, we are rated, we are first in the country for college access. Um, and what that means is that we're, our students are graduating within four years. They're go they're having career success. Also our numbers coming out of high school, as far as access and what's provided and the tools we are giving them is higher than um, a majority of high schools throughout the United States. And that's something to, we're only um, not six or seven years old or something like that. So that's that's a pretty high standard that we've set for ourselves. We don't do those tests because they honestly aren't working. They say things like you're gonna be a caretaker or you're going to, you know, you should try to, what we're looking at or what our students interest in cats did they find that experience helpful um, what are their passions what classes feel easy to them or hard what things um, how do they feel in a lab how do they feel taking water samples in environmental science we are approaching this again because we are a montessori high school and a very intentional holistic I get to know each and every single student who passes through GRS. I know them by name. I know what their interests are. And I'm also committed to writing every single student a letter of rec. I wrote 92 letters of rec this year for students who had taken a gap year and our current class. And I had something individual to say about all 92 of those kids. And that's your test. And I'm pretty proud of that and happy because I think that's about a human being and it's not what an al algorithm gives you. And I, I stand behind that. Next question, is there any uh, resource available at Great River to help a student apply for PSEO? And if so, who should that be directed to? So they, both Matt and I are happy to answer questions. We're also happy to go over graduation requirements. I'm happy, I have that chart outside my office. I'm happy to give you all the forms. But the student is responsible for a plot. Again, if they can't do this one obstacle, <laughs> this college course or this path of independency may not be the best path for them. Okay. Um, <laughs> there is a question that asks, will you stay at Great River School forever and ever, Teresa? <laughs> I get asked that every year, you guys. Every single year, students come up to me. Like, I don't, I don't even know that are ninth graders and say, are you planning to stay till I graduate? <laughs> um, there's a follow-up question on the PSAT. It's being used for the National Merit Scholarship. So I'm guessing the student is interested in that. You should, then you should take it at, those were the two students that we have every year who are really interested in the national, also the National Hispanic um, um, Merit Scholarship, which we have in the history of Great River, we have had one in the National Hispanic and um, I believe two, and two to three in the National Merit. And uh, Soren, I see your question and that will be answered in our next segment. So if I don't get to that question, try to reword it and make sure it gets in there again, because I do want to make sure to address it. So if that concludes any PSEO specific questions, knowing that you can find Matt and Teresa via email or in the hallway, uh, we are happy to wave goodbye to Teresa and transition to some information about IB. Thanks, Teresa. Yeah, you're very welcome. IB at Great River School is also a beautiful uh, opportunity that our grade mm -hmm. 10s are thinking about in terms of their course path for next year. And so our goal for tonight is to be able to answer 
what is the IB? Because the Great River School loves acronyms. Uh, talk about why IB at GRS is unique. Consider what are my course options for next year? What do I get a choice in and whatnot? And, and then hopefully hear from some alums um, as we consider what's best for your student or you, if you're a student in the audience. Hello, if you're a student in the audience, excited to have you here. Our process and timeline, excuse me, I'm gonna get a little sip of water. Tonight is IB Info Night. Uh, you're learning about your options for next year. And hopefully I encourage you to talk to your mentors, your guides at Great River School about what they think, where they see your strengths and your weaknesses and um, get an idea of what's next for you. On Friday, March 31st, I'll look for your registration. You'll have a link on Schoology. In April, we'll review your application. And then in June, you will sign up officially for your Great River School courses for next year. <laughs> Acronyms at Great River School, so many. One of them is IB. What actually is IB? Uh, IB, the International Baccalaureate, is a beautiful part of uh, supporting the Great River School mission and vision, world peace through Montessori education. Uh, and if you read the IB mission statement highlighted in yellow here, I think it will speak to all of us who put our children in uh, the school of Great River School because of the mission of Great River. Um, they're just, in my five years as IB coordinator and an IB teacher at Great River, it's just such a beautiful blend. And I think uh, the Great River School mission and the IB mission really support each other in terms of building world peace. So the acronym IB, International Baccalaureate, it was originally intended to create a, a system where um, if a student moved countries, like for instance, a student moved from the United States to the Czech Republic or the United States to Japan or Japan to the United States. Uh, families could not in, um, could plan on not interrupting their children's education. So what's cool is if you're sitting in a IB math applications classroom at Great River School, there is another student sitting somewhere else around the world in an IB math applications classroom taking the same exact course as you. And so it's um, a very globally focused program. And like Montessori, it is designed to be very rigorous. A lot is expected of students and a lot of it is expected um, in terms of their independence. Like advanced placement, which tends to be more popular and more well-known, the AP system, it is a credential recognized um, by our universities and colleges around the world. I really wanted to put this slide up here just to highlight, uh, it's often that we get bogged down in like the rigor and the academic context, but the IB mission is meant to be holistic. And we really try hard at Great River to provide a lot of support around the IB um, that allows this mission to flourish. So this is the words of the IB. And I think, again, if you read it, it really uh, parallels what we're trying to do at Great River School. I also want to highlight how IB is very different than advanced placement. And so some important things to know about their differences. Uh, advanced placement is usually multiple choice tests at the end of a one year course where the IB tries to be a liberal arts education and a much more holistic approach. So for instance, again, in line with Montessori principles, uh, students within IB courses are invited to do independent projects. Often they're called internal assessments or IAs. They get to choose their path for that project. They get to choose their topic. Uh, and it's a really in-depth, study that the IB, that the student um, explores on their own. In addition, uh, there's a lot of inquiry built into IB classes. And our IB classes at Great River School are two years in length instead of one year, again, allowing for greater depth. You can learn more about the IB, of course, at the IB website, which I will link in the PDF you will receive uh, of the slide deck after tonight. 
We are so proud of IB at Great River School because it is unique compared to the other 20 schools in Minnesota that offer the IB. We are the uh, only school that is considered IB for all, which means that every single 11th and 12th grade traditional student in our building is in an IB class. And uh, we love seeing that core that happens, seventh graders having classes together, eighth graders having classes together all the way through their 12th grade year of being in classes uh, with their peers and not having a school within the school that can often create a lack of perspective and a lack of um, diverse life experiences. So again, it's the last two years of high school and it's two year classes, although there are some classes that you could choose to take for one year only. And what I wanna really highlight tonight and what you'll hear me talk about is every 10th grader has a choice. They get to choose whether they are doing a full IB diploma or whether they want to be in some IB courses with their peers, but also take non-IB electives like musicianship and ceramics. So those two options are, I wanna go in depth and make sure you understand your options for next year. Uh, I also want to kind of go back to this idea of being an IB for all school. Um, we do not have any admissions requirements for our diploma program or any of our IB courses. That's rare in the world of IB. Our IB coordinator position, my position currently, was rewritten in 2020 to allow my role to support students and uh, focus on retention of this really hard, rigorous program. And so I have time weekly to meet with students one on one. And we also have a chance to meet bi-weekly to do wellness checks and build community. What are my options? So as I said, as we focus in on tonight, I want to be clear on your two choices, the diploma or the non-diploma and those differences. So if you as a 10th grader are thinking about next year and you wanna choose the most rigorous path available to high school students, I think in the world, then you are gonna choose what's in blue here, the IB diploma. That means you are gonna have a full schedule of seven courses. That's a lot. You're currently probably taking six. So that's a very, very packed schedule. You will have three higher level courses, uh, meaning that they're very in-depth and very challenging and three standard level IB courses. And beyond those six courses, you'll also have theory of knowledge, a very cool philosophy course. Uh, in addition, you would write a extended essay, which I personally think is a really fun opportunity to dig super deep into something you're passionate about. And that extended essay can literally be on anything. Uh, so if you're someone who's driven by curiosity, the extended essay would be a fun component of your diploma journey. And then like every other Great River School 11th and 12th grader, you would participate in CAS. There are a few extra diploma requirements for CAS. So the most rigorous path is on the blue part of your screen. On the orange part of your screen is the non-diploma path. You would still absolutely be in IB courses with all of your peers for literature, mathematics, science, and global politics. But then you have a little more flexibility in your schedule to do non-IB electives such as ceramics, musicianships, musicianship, ethnic studies, chemistry as a science elective, et cetera. Everyone takes CAS. So uh, whether you do the non-diploma or diploma, you are enrolled in our creativity, activity, and service that mostly takes place on Wednesday afternoons. If you choose a non-diploma, you absolutely could still get IB credit for your university. You would sit down at the end of your 12th grade year and take an IB exam, for instance, for your IB literature course. And if you do well on that exam, then we send that off to colleges and uh, hopefully the college would award you a college credit for that. For those of you thinking about that rigorous path and asking the question, but how do I actually get like this IB diploma in my hand? Uh, at the end of your senior year, we send off your projects that I talked about and you sit down and take your exams. And then you get um, 
a certificate from IB that says how many points you earned in each of your subjects. And if you earn 24 points, you get the diploma. And I will say, if you stake out the diploma at Great River School and engage in it, you will absolutely earn the IB diploma. We've had great success throughout the last three years and beyond. And it's usually about the case that we hover around a 90% success rate for that. So whether you're thinking about the most rigorous path, the IB diploma, or a mix of GR, uh, IB courses and GRS electives, I want to let you know that you can get college credit for your IB courses. And this is a snapshot. So here are some popular colleges that our past alums have applied to and gotten acceptance to. And you can see across the screen uh, what you would need to get on an exam in order to earn college credit on that. And I would say no score on here is rare except for maybe a six in HL math. Uh, so getting college credit from our IB courses is a very feasible and achievable thing for any 11th and 12th grader who engages in these courses. You'll notice if you choose to do the diploma that some colleges offer additional rewards for completing the most rigorous high school program in the world. And so there's some bonus credit listed to the right if you were to complete the IB diploma. You can always Google. So like if there's a college that you're interested in that's not on here, you could type in Florida State IB credit. Um, you can see where my mind is in uh, the icy snowy conditions right now. And it is easily Googleable. You'll be able to find out what Florida State offers in terms of college credit for IB classes. So feel free to Google to get um, the old blog that talks more about IB credit at university. There is a lot of research about the benefits of doing the IB diploma in high school, including what our alum has reported back, our alums have reported back. So they consistently come back and say, it was really hard. It, the diploma is no joke. It is a really hard, rigorous program. But they report that if given the opportunity, they would do it again. And they're glad they did it because of the strong system of guides that know them as students well, uh, that they had at Great River School versus trying to do something really rigorous and hard for the first time at university when uh, you're also rebuilding a support network. An exciting time, but probably a more challenging time to encounter something new for the first time. I'll also let you dig in if you're a nerd like me into the research. There's three questions here about uh, how does the diploma impact uh, high schoolers and U.S. public schools, how does it impact uh, selection into university, and how does it impact preparation for university. And um, the research indicates that the IB diploma has a positive impact for those who engage in it. And if you want to hear from a selective university, uh, this is a Stanford um, professor speaking at how they view the International Baccalaureate uh, at within the Stanford admissions. Let's dig a little bit into the actual question of what can you take next year? Which courses can you take if you're at Great River School? So in IB Math, all of our grade 10s will be placed or counseled into their IB Math course, and that is in either applications and interpretations, which is more data centered, or a math class that focuses more heavily on algebra and uh, the theory of math, which would be analysis and approaches. Every student at Great River in 11th and 12th grade takes IB literature, IB global politics, and an IB science. You'll notice that your next choice is an IB science. We offer two IB science courses. We offer IB environmental systems and societies, which has always been a beautiful core part of um, Great River School. And we are currently in the midst of uh, deciding what other IB science course we're gonna offer next year. We will either offer sports exercise and health science, which is uh, very similar to anatomy physiology, 
or a IB biology class, which is a rigorous next step um, in a student's biology and life sciences journey. If you choose to take an IB elective, remember there's non IB electives like ceramics, but there's also IB electives you can opt into, which would be visual arts, theater, or music. Um, and I'm excited for you to hear from some alums on how they would describe each of those courses. And then lastly, each 10th grader gets to decide whether they're gonna continue their Spanish career uh, in 11th and 12th grade. So we have a class called Spanish B, which is a um, Spanish class that assumes a lot of prior knowledge in Spanish. And we also have a Spanish ab initio that assumes a little less prior knowledge. Both of them are good IB science courses and a student would be placed in one of those Spanish courses if they were to continue their Spanish career. As I mentioned on IB math, um, we have two courses, one called application shown in blue in your screen and one called analysis shown in green on your screen. The difference just being the applications is more based in if a student is really interested in going into the humanities. And an analysis is more based in if a student is interested in going into STEM, science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. And again, we will be working, I'm a math guide too, we'll be working with all of your students to help them find the right placement. IB Science, if you want to read a little more about um, what we offer and thinking about uh, which one is a better fit for you, you can choose between the IB uh, Environmental Systems and Societies that goes and takes water samples in the woods or uh, whatever we decide to offer in more of the life sciences and how the body operates um, or how creatures operate. And so biology looks at cells, organisms, ecosystems, and molecules where sports exercise and health science, as I mentioned, is a very in-depth anatomy and physiology course. And we don't know at this point which of those yellow red ones we're going to offer, but we are going to offer one of them. So to so be continued. IB electives, a little more uh, about each. IB theater does have a performance component, but it's not all performance. Um, most of it is not um, is focused on like all the things that go into making a production the lighting, the staging, the history, the techniques in the script, the writing of scripts. Uh, and I have heard students just rave about how much fun they have in IB theater. It tends to be a close tight knit group. Um, so that's something if you're looking to build community and be a part of something uh, that seems to be a very close knit and tight group and a very favorite amongst um, classes in 11th and 12th grade. IB Music has so many fun elements too. They get to play with making music. They get to use technology to create music. They get to delve into music theory. Uh, and that is with Zach Scott, who also is a popular guide that students often take electives with in grades nine and 10. He also runs our musicianship course. And then visual arts with Randy tends to be our biggest IB elective. Um, and we have a lot of students who have great art talent. And it's not just about painting and it's not just about drawing, but IB art can be um, all sorts of different varieties. What students uh, tend to be surprised about in IB, uh, IB visual arts, there's a lot of writing. There is a lot of writing in IB visual arts. So that's something to consider. Uh, as you think about the rigor of what electives you might want for next year. And again, I'm excited to hear from our alums in a few minutes about their reflections on each of these. The last thing to think about in terms of your course choices is whether or not to, uh, to continue your Spanish career. So uh, pros, um, college access definitely is a benefit to have those IB Spanish um, classes on your transcript. Uh, there's good travel opportunities, of course. Language acquisition in general is a great way to grow your brain and be a lifelong learner. But 
We also understand that IB Spanish takes up a space in your schedule. And so if you want to take 11th and 12th grade to have more flexibility and more choice in your electives, then Spanish might not be for you in grades 11 or 12. So that's a choice you get to make and that you can think about if you choose to not do the full IB diploma. Full IB diploma students, you will have to take IB Spanish as it's part of your liberal arts education. How do I decide what is right for me? If you are an alum that would like to share some thoughts, if you can just raise your hand. Stephanie, I see you. I'm promoting you to panelist uh, in the uh, attendees. And Mateo, I also see you. If there are any other alums that are here to uh, speak to their IB experience at Great River School, just throw a hand up in the attendee list. But uh, we have two wonderful alums, one from 2021, that's Stephanie. Stephanie, can you raise your hand or wave? And one from 2022, Mateo. Both are IB visual arts. Uh, alums. So they took that course with Randy and both were also diploma students at Great River School. And so Stephanie, I'm going to start with you. Um, what is one thing you treasure about your experience in IB visual arts class or one thing that has stuck with you? And I will warn you that both of you are muted when I promoted you to panelist. Oh yeah, we've got this. Thank you. Um, I think it's very hard to narrow it down to just one thing because I loved being part of the IB visual art program. Um, but I would say even for people who have no plans for pursuing art in the future, um, I loved having organized critiques of our work. So you, I really learned how to give kind and useful feedback to other people which was just a very valuable lesson in life, I think. Beautiful. Mateo, would you add anything about um, how IB Visual Arts has paid off for you now that you've journeyed away from Great River School? Um, I guess I would do the, I would say the flip side of that almost. I learned how to take criticism better um, I think I was already somewhat okay at giving feedback, but I think I always struggle with taking critical feedback and not taking it personally. And so I think that was a really, um, I think that a class act excels at that and teaching you that type of feedback and being able to take it because there's gonna be a lot of people who end up telling you, uh, trying to help you, but you just don't wanna take it the wrong way. Uh, Mateo, I'm going to go back to you next. Is there anything that surprised you about IB visual arts? I know it's a cliche about saying writing, but like, I'm not even kidding you. I think the first year, like, I think my biggest pet peeve was the amount of writing. Like, I don't think I, I had never really like been forced to document because that's kind of like the big thing. The whole reason that you write stuff is to document your art process. And I was not used to that. And that I definitely struggled with that. And so I think that was like a huge surprise like that where you're made to document everything. And then Stephanie, over to you. Um, so both of you were IB visual arts students and both of you were also IB diploma students, meaning that you completed the most rigorous high school program in the world. You did all seven classes, um, the six core classes in theory of knowledge. Um, as you moved away from Great River School into university, how have you reflected in how that shaped you, whether positively or negatively, like feel free to um, talk about I just found it very helpful for shaping how I interact with really hard problems. Um, so especially I was in IB HL math um, and now I am a math major. And when I was going through that system, um, I learned a lot to look at really hard problems 
and then try to figure them out by myself. And if I couldn't figure them out, I went and asked for help. And now I do that every single day. I look at a problem and I think this doesn't look possible. And then I try it again and again, and it works. So it was just so much problem solving skills. I appreciate that. And Mateo, I know that we spent um, some hard moments together in your diploma journey. And there were moments like every diploma student has uh, where you're like, wow, is this worth it? And like, I'm opening this to your honest answer. Like, what is your honest answer now that you have taken a step away from Great River School? And I'm bearing, I'm bearing down for like, I'm okay with you answering honestly here. So go ahead. Um, okay. I will be completely honest. I think there was only one thing that was useful from the IB diploma. And at least for me, um, and that was learning how to ask for help and engaging with you the support system because um, when you go to college, it's a very different ball game. And I think a lot of times I was told that as like college would be harder. I also want to preface at the same time, you should not have the same expectations for yourself as you do with the IB diploma, but as you do end up doing in college. Um, and, but I do think the one thing you can that stays consistent is your ability to ask for help. Because I think in college, things get a lot harder than you might imagine. And the, the IB prepares you specifically to be able to ask for help and use the systems of support that are around you. Because there's a lot of that in college. Um, it's hard to find sometimes, but IB also teaches you how to look for it. So. Teresa, do you have any additional insight from your corner of college or questions that you might want to ask these two about um, choosing between a diploma path and uh, a non-diploma path at Great River? Well, first of all, I miss both of you, so I'm going to start with that. And hi, nice to see your faces. Um, could both of you say kind of where you go, where you are for college so that people can know that and oh that's such a great question thanks Teresa Stephanie first and then Mateo okay um I am currently a sophomore at um St. Olaf and I'm majoring in math and gender and sexuality studies I am a freshman at Dartmouth College and the plan is to major in art environmental sciences and a minor in Native American studies. So Stephanie, I'm gonna start with you. Um, how do you think the IB diploma uh, prepared you for the workload of the college that you're attending? I think it prepared me very well. Um, I think that in the first month of school, I definitely saw a bunch of freshmen very nervous and very overwhelmed. And I mean, I felt overwhelmed too. It was a new place, a new experience, but I knew that I could handle it. Um, and I knew what to do if I felt like I couldn't handle it. Um, so I just felt quite prepared um, for that. Mateo? Um, I think honestly, the IB workload was worse than college work. <laughs> Um, I think it actually ended up the only problem with college that makes it difficult is learning how to balance your time with everything else because you have so much free time and what I think that's like like a reminder like once you're once you're doing the IB like you have you go from having so much workload to like very little and and then it's kind of like oh wait a second how do I not get distracted and forget that I do actually have to do work. Thank you both for answering that. Um, Lindsay, we have about four questions in the chat. Can I throw them out to the group? I uh, Yes, and I see them on my end too. I think a few of them might get answered uh, in the last few slides here, but okay. yes, if you have any, Stephanie and Mateo, we very much appreciated having you here. I know you're busy college students, so if you would love to wave to us send you GRS love. 
uh, and keep making us proud and come visit anytime. So thank you for your thoughts. I am going to, I think you can, uh, you're again, feel free to stay, but Teresa, if you can figure out on your yeah, end, I got I can it. click around. Can I, can I read them to you? Uh, so can I do a few more slides? Cause I think they'll, they might get to it and then yes, you can open it to questions. Um, so before we get to our questions, uh, I want to highlight some reasons because we didn't have a chance this year to hear from someone who chose not to do the diploma. Uh, Tony, who's in art school out in New York, was a great panelist last year, and I'll try to get you the link to what he said. Um, but in general, as we see students smartly choose a path that's right for them, which is a non-diploma, the reasons they choose that is allowing for greater flexibility in their schedule, less academic rigor to be able to focus on sports or theater or their arts and um, needing more time for independent work during the school day uh, in 11th and 12th grade, or really needing to focus on their GPA and raising their GPA. And so those are very valid reasons why students choose the right path for them as a non-diploma route. So questions to consider as we navigate this choice of diploma versus non-diploma. What are your personal academic and personal strengths? What is going to give you the best chance for success, however you define success? What do my teachers and my mentors at Great River think um, about next steps? What have I really enjoyed learning about? And what do my caregivers think is also a good question to continue asking and wondering. Frequently asked questions. Um, all, again, all students take it, IB exams at Great River, but do not have to actually sit and take the exams. So you can be in an IB course and not take the exams at the end or choose to take the exams at the end. You can absolutely be in our IB program with a 504 and IEP. I would say about half of the students that are taking IB exams this year have a 504 or IEP, and we absolutely respect and honor and support those accommodations and modifications. Uh, IB exams, we always wanna be transparent and say this as many times as we can. They do cost money, but at Great River School, we feel so deeply uh, in making sure cost is not a barrier that we go above and beyond behind the scenes in our business office to make sure that cost is not a barrier to those exams. So what if you register for the diploma? You pick that really rigorous path, you sign up for it, and you decide like next December that it's not for you. Well, you signed up to do a marathon and we are there to cheer you on and to say you can do it even when you want to give up. So I want you to think really seriously about the diploma versus the non-diploma, because once you're in it, we're gonna do everything we can to be your cheerleaders and supporters and to support you to the finish line. However, there are some times when we sit down at those support meetings and realize that the diploma is not right for that student in that particular time. And we make a transition point at that point. But again, if you think from the beginning about the reasons that students in the past have dropped the diploma, seeking greater academic and personal freedom, raising their GPA, et cetera, those are probably some good guidance for um, making a decision from the, a good decision from the beginning. So again, the actions needed, you have all of March to talk to the people that love you and wanna support you. And uh, I'll have the IB registration form available on Schoology and posted in big letters on the bulletin board outside of Zach Scott's room uh, to make sure we can get that submission by March 31st. So yes, Teresa, let's jump into some Q&A uh, about IB. Go for it. Um, about what percentage of students choose to do the IB diploma? About one fourth to one third. So this year we have um, 20 students graduating in the IB diploma class. And next year we have about 18 students. We have 18 11th graders currently in the IB diploma program. 
Um, and this was a question for the um, Mateo and Stephanie, and I'm sorry I didn't ask. Oh, sure. it. Great question. But do you feel the IB diploma helped with your admissions? I would say that's pretty Googleable. Um, so that's something you can look at. I'm also happy to put you in touch with some alumni too. If, um, but but that's a lot of data, and they say time and time again they have that tier that I talked about with the IB diploma being first. Uh, the next question was the percentage of students. Same thing. Um, is the IB for all the same as the non-diploma option? Why bother doing the IB diploma if that IB for all will be on the transcript already? Sure. And so um, what you might have heard Teresa talk about in the very beginning are those tiers. So that first tier in college admissions is the full IB diploma with all seven courses, the extended essay and the extra requirements for CAS. And then after that, IB courses, your IB literature, your IB science, your IB math, your IB global politics, those of, of course are gonna look awesome on your college transcript, um, but that diploma offers um, a bit of an edge when it comes to selective colleges and keeping as many doors open as possible. And I would, I just want to add to that, that it is so, um, the first question on college applications is, are you an IB diploma candidate? So that's one of the first questions. That's one of the first questions for teachers. It also gives you a seal on your transcript that says you're a full IB diploma candidate. And also when you graduate, you get a cool gold sash that you get to wear at graduation, um, that you are part of the IB diploma program, so. Uh, this is a great question. Does the IB diploma prepare students well for science-based majors in college? Oh, I thought you were gonna take uh, that question, Teresa. Uh, I can me... take that. No, I would love to take that question, but I just, you know. Go for um, it. I think that's why we're having the discussions that we're, we're having. I think we're committed as a school for access and the highest quality of diploma and education and curriculum that we can give each student, whether they're an IB diploma candidate or not. Um, we're out, again, we're looking at that accessibility. So that's why we're talking about those science courses as they have changed the health in science. Um, looking ahead, we're looking at how that can be. But yes, we have had students um, go to some of the best, what's considered science schools such as MIT, um, and yeah, and we work very hard at that. I would also say that if you have a dream school like Caltech or MIT or Harvey Mudd, look at what they are saying for requirements. What are they looking for? Um, and let's have those conversations early. It's good to dream. It's good to look ahead at those college websites. And Again, that's something I'm always doing and Lindsay and I are always talking about because we're super committed to both of those things. Okay. Um, the confusion is about the, uh, is the non-diploma what all students, oh, wait, it went away. Is there talk of going to a four block schedule to allow IB students to have more time to take elective courses? I personally have not heard that as an official proposal for next year, but we of course will be in communication with students and families if there are any changes to allow for that flexibility. And again, that's kind of going back to how I was describing the IB diploma students having a really full schedule where they have three classes per day. Um, and so three classes on Monday, three classes on Tuesday, and then they have an extra class on Wednesday called uh, theory of knowledge, which is a philosophy based course. Um, I think that's all the questions that I'm seeing, unless anybody has any others. I'm just going to give them a couple of minutes and then we will close up and say good night to you all. Yes, we appreciate right early tomorrow. Everyone coming. And again, for those of you departing, you know where to find us and feel free to stop by. Feel free to shoot us emails um, as you consider your next steps at Great River School. Have a great night, everyone.
we have a question on how the IB grading system works. And so I'll make sure um, to kind of highlight that in the slide deck. But it's very similar to how Great River School currently um, grades students on a one through seven scale. The IB is the same way. So when students sit down and take their exams May of senior year, uh, they will get a report back that mm -hmm. ranks them at a seven, which is absolutely exceptional, all the way down to a one. We never get ones. We prepare our students well. And so uh, most students end up getting a grade from IB. And again, that's separate from Great River School. Um, that's on a one through scale based on their exams and based on the official projects that we send in for their IB credit. Do IB grades align with the A through F system? The IB, because it's an international um, global um, organization, they don't adhere to a very American system of A through F grades. And so uh, the IB grades, you could kind of think about in the A through F, um, but I would say a seven is like an A plus plus because it's so rare and so exceptional. And where like a four does actually match our system pretty well. A four, very similar to having a four great river would match to a B on an American transcript.